name is Paul Harris and I was the battle scenes choreographer in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I'm just preparing for my trip to the celebration of Harry Potter in Orlando. I'm definitely going to need my wand, so I'm heading to the studios just outside London where all the movies were filmed. It's very exciting because Warner Brothers have preserved all the key sets, costumes and props and now have them on permanent display in the Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter. I can't wait to see everything again. Well, how, how do you know my name? Well, we know everything about Harry Potter films here. Well, I'm going to the Harry Potter celebration and you are one. Follow me. We have all the original sets, props and costumes, so should we problem at all? So cool. Welcome to Hogwarts.
I'm seen uh, in the Order of the Phoenix, and I created and devised the physical language for fighting with the wand for the franchise known as Wand Combat. I've been asked to talk to you a little bit about that today and explain some of the process that went behind it, so I'm going to do that before we move on to um, some other stuff involving you. So. Um, okay, well, I had done three movies previously with the director David Yates, and I, I knew that David was going to be directing uh, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and I saw Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in a cinema in Bangkok, actually, and when I got back to London, I knew I wouldn't be seeing David for a year and a half because he was going to be tied up in this movie, which ended up being quite a few more years than a year and a half, but at that point it looked like it was going to be a year and a half. So we went, we went for a drink and, uh, and a chat and I said, oh, why didn't you do the fourth movie? There was a ball in it because I'm a choreographer, so 90% of the stuff I do is obviously dancing. But, um, so that's it, you know, there's, there's nothing for me. Anyway, if I cut to June of 2006, I was driving to uh, see a play that I choreographed, quite a low key play, but my phone had been ringing all day. My phone rang again. I picked up, oh, none again. I picked up my phone, it said David Yates. I'm like, well, oh, he's in the middle of Harry Potter, we can't want to go for a drink. And, uh, so uh, I, I said, hi, uh, hi David, and he said, oh, hi mate. He said, um, I've got a job for you. I said, but you're doing Harry Potter, we've had this conversation, there's no dancing in it. And he said, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit complicated. Can you come into Leavesden? Now, I remember clearly this was a Friday. Uh, so I said, well, I'm going to Asia on Wednesday. And he said, oh, mate, is, 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 that, written, is that written in stone? And I said, for Harry Potter, probably not. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, uh, I went into Leavesden on the Monday. Uh, sorry, on the Tuesday of the following week. And David showed me the storyboard that was done at that point. Now, you may or, not, may or may not be aware of this, but for this to happen is really incredible. It's incredible vision from a director, and it's incredible uh, just gen general foresight. What, what he showed me on the storyboard is pretty much shot for shot what is on the screen at the end of Order of the Phoenix. That's very, very rare. But uh, he explained to me that what he'd identified is that uh, a physical language was necessary for the franchise to fight with the one, like ballet or kung fu or whatever it may be. So um, initially, what he, what he asked for was one movement for one spell. So I went away, I reread the books, and I watched all the movies again, but with a different eye than just watching them on a, on a plane or something, you know. So I went back uh, about two weeks later, three weeks later, and I said, David, I, I can't do what you want me to do, because every spell has already been done with little or no physical action. So we can't suddenly introduce a convention whereby the spell won't work unless you do this movement. But so what I can do is, given what, who's, who's done, who's executed magic already, given what's gone, and also, obviously, we had advanced knowledge of what was coming, given what's coming and who's about to execute magic and the scale of the magic that's going to be executed, I can create a technique like ballet, like kung fu, like, like uh, well, any other art form, really, a basis from which choreography could be developed. And so that's what I did. I created a set of positions for attacking movements, set of positions for defensive movements, from which I could create and build all the choreography that we needed. So in the first instance, it was the, the serious Black death sequence in the Veil Room and the Voldemort Dumbledore battle in the atrium. You, you, I guess you, you all know those intimately, right? So, um, 
that's, that, that's how that came about. And I guess the other kind of um, anecdote about that is uh, one of the producers of the movie, David Barry, when we were discussing uh, my credit, when he was discussing my credit with my agent, uh, he said, yeah, but he said, if, if we just call Paul the, uh, the choreographer, so people might think there was a dance sequence and it was cut. So he, why don't we come up with something else? So we came up with choreographer wand combat. And apparently, according to Warner Brothers, I am the only choreographer of wand combat in the world. So that leads me neatly on as the world's only wand combat choreographer to you. So I need you all up, please. But my wand has disappeared. That are fantastic. On cue. How many of you have wands? How many of you are prepared to pretend that you have a wand? Okay. Right. What I'm going to do. How, oh yes. One more thing. How many of you have seen the interactive feature with? Less. Less. Okay. That, that's good actually. Uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the five attacking positions that are included in the interactive feature. I'm also going to explain some of the blocks, but the blocks I'm going to explain to six people that I'm going to choose to come up on stage with myself and with someone else that's coming up here shortly. So, one moment, so I, I need to choose ideally people that are over 18 and people that are prepared. So, okay, so, ones that have ready. The first position for one combat. I had to include, in, in devising this, I had to take into account everything that had gone before, everything that was about to uh, come. And so, with the things that had gone before, I had to incorporate a nod to fencing because of the, the duel of the uh, work with Kenneth Branagh and Alan Rickman in the earlier film. So, first position, if you know dancing, it's second position plie. If you know kung fu, it's horse stance. So nice plie. Hand above the head, clean curve above the head with the one aimed directly at the enemy, who in this case is this fine cameraman who had my wand. <laughs> you bring the wand forward of the head. Now, crucially, this is very, very important, the um, convention that was introduced as regards physicality in order of the phoenix is the what's in the first lesson in film one swish and flick so make sure that you turn the one inwards for the finality of the movement for the delivery so the, the one will turn inwards at me Bellatrix, very good okay <laughs> so one above the head second position plie bring the one forward and retract it back Ready? This is action! One! Is everybody clear? Can I have a look at that? Let me see everybody. Ready? And action! <laughs> Rubbish! Again, 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 again. Ready? Action! Oh, very nice. Good there. Good. Okay. So from there, this is going to be slightly tricky if you're in seats. But from here, what I want you to do is as much as possible, bring the right side through if you're right-handed, turn the one inwards again so you get the finality on the end of the delivery of the spell. There. That moment is really important. So from here, turn through to there. Let me have a look at that. So second, wait, 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 wait. Chill out. <laughs> Second position, plie. Ready? If possible, you're going to bring your left side through. Protect your centre. Um, turn the one again inwards to get the switch and the flick. Now, the crew, a really pivotal thing, as kind of super fans, you might find this really interesting. At the end of Order of the Phoenix, you will know that Voldemort disarms Harry, uh, uh, disarms Harry with no wand. He just sw sweeps his arm and, the, and Harry drops his wand. So I said to David, well, that means there has to be 
a physical element behind the power of the wizard. It's not just that they bought a better wand. So there has to be something that makes one wizard better than another. What is that? And so it comes in the physicality, in the delivery of the spell. So the body from then onwards became a really important aspect in protecting yourself and in, and in uh, attacking. But in this case, in the, in the five um, constructing positions, it's defense. So protect your center and bring the wand across yourself and turn it inwards. So from the first position, one, going to bring the right side through, two, going to bring the left side through, three, but each of those, you need to turn the one inwards, counterclockwise, inwards. So get that on the end of it. Yeah, obviously if you're left-handed, just reverse it, but the same principles apply. Right, let's put those three together. Ready? Above the head. Action! One, bring the right side through. Two, bring the left side through. Three. Okay, let, let me see you all up to there. Ready? Stand by. Plie. Action. One, right side through. Two, left side through. Three. Uh, less caffeine in the morning. Okay. Okay, from here. It's established in the books that there's a sense that you can see. The, the, the stronger wizards can, they know what's behind them. They don't need to physically see it. So, turn your body, continue to, uh, from here your left leg is forward if you're right-handed. Turn your body to the right, this way. And deliver the spell behind you, that way. Still giving the finality of the, of the delivery behind you, there. I, I, do, I run the last two movements together. Continue to turn to the right so that you can fire the spell behind your back this way, which looks very spectacular with a cloak like that. So, but I, I'll come over here so it's clear. So, from here, turn your body to the right, so again, anti clockwise, this, and then fire the spell behind you. Continue to turn in the same direction and fire the spell behind you this way. We, we clear? Yes. Okay, let's have a look. Second position. Plie. Above the head. Action. One. Right side through. Two. Left side through. Three. Turn right. Four. Turn right. Five. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let me see you. Okay, stand by. Ready. Michelle, 
Jennifer, Victoria, Dan, Iman. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm gonna this, this group. I'm gonna take through. Who's the left hander? Okay. Are you ready? Check. Okay. So first position, everybody. One above the head. Nice clean line. Make sure that there's a clean line above your head. Don't shoot the camera. That's it. Bend your knees. Good. Wow. You're shooting your arm off. That's it. You want this cooking? Okay. Well, one was cooking. One was cooking. Right. Bring the side through. Lunge into the set and twist the wand into the delivery of the spell. Good. Bring the left side through, bring the wand across your body, protect the center. Turn, turn to the right, bring the side through, turn to the left for, for you. That's very elaborate. <laughs> bring the wand this way and direct it back, directly back. Keep turning, keep turning, same direction. Behind your back, make sure you're kind of on your toes so you've got a clear space behind you. Are you drunk? <laughs> It's the same thing, just, just the other direction. Okay, so let me see you all do that. You ready? Avoid alcohol this time in the morning, it's not good. Here we go. Ready? Not me, look over there. So, to block this spell, the first block would be high above the head, so essentially you would knock the spell away, or, ch or block it with this one, high above the head. High to the right, high to the left, low to the right, and low to the left. So, we're, we're, we had quite big discussions about what would constitute wand shrapnel, what would happen when one wand blocks another, the spell from another wand. So let's just do those spells. So high above the head. Come on, everybody, high above the head. And then high to the right, knock the spell away. High to the left, low to the right, and low to the left. Right, let me see those blocks. Let me see those blocks. Above the head. <laughs> There. <laughs> High to the left. High to the right. Low to the left. Low to the right. Not bad. That was, all, that was very girly. I, I mean, personally, I kind of like it, but it's not right. <laughs> It was wood, back then they were wood. 
and it was uh, it was turned. You could see it. Somebody turned it on the lathe, and it was lovely. And somebody thought about it quite, and it really fitted Arthur. And I was very pleased with it, as indeed everybody is. But it kind of developed through the films, and by the end of it, it became a kind of um, one weapons industry. They had their own sort of secret hut. You weren't allowed to go into it. Like, Wands. And people used to come up and be, be presented with an array of wands and they could decide what they wanted. But yeah, everybody, everybody really liked their wand. It was like, there was something cowboyish about it. And uh, when uh, Bellatrix got killed by the wife, She was shopping and she said, how is everybody? What's going on? And then she said, I really miss my wand. <laughs> so it, it got people like that. Cool. And then the, all of them. And the, and the, the last fight was just, um, you know, the final battle was, uh, was an extraordinary kind of marathon for us all. But, it was a great, it was a great ending, a great ending. And when, I, I, I mean, it, it wasn't the case for me because my rehearsal one was otherwise known as a stick. But uh, I, did, did you guys have to sign your ones in and out? No, we didn't. But um, anybody who'd been on all eight films is called a lifer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, Julie was, I wasn't in the first film and Julie wasn't in the fifth. But um, one of the lifers, we kind of counted ourselves as lifers as a couple, you know. One of the, um, one of the guys who was a lifer was Gary, who was standby props. Uh, and he, he, and I worked with him on, on a, another film earlier, actually, but he, he, every day, every day, he counted the ones out and he counted them back in again. And he was just too poetic, he's going like, Box lock. No chance of, of taking a wand. <laughs> well, speaking of wands, we have a slightly unprepared, but nonetheless very enthusiastic army over here. Are you, uh, are you charging me to a duel? Well, Mr. Weasley. Do you have a wand, even? One thing you learn in the ministry is... Never be a... <laughs> no, right, army! Now, he's left-handed. So, uh, you can go on his team because you're drunk. So you can... <laughs> and then one of the left-handers come with me, and uh, we'll have half and half. I'll have Belgium. Okay. Okay, let's go over here. That's it. Okay, let's go. That's that. good. So you're okay. my team. This is Mark's team. And we are going to improvise a battle. But wait, 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 wait. Trying to talk tactics here. This is, this is. I see that line. Okay. He's okay. So we're just going to improvise a battle. I'm going to okay. the outside. Around the movements that you did, your kind of uh, uh, secret weapon, which is left handed, we can use all of this stage, hide behind the plants, do whatever you want, be careful. I'm okay. Uh, Mark? I'm not blocking you, me to attack you. Mr. Weasley? Sure. Any time, my flight leaves later. Yeah. <laughs> See? Did you uh, put a bit of adrenaline there, guys, Ross? 
Yes. Do you see that? <sighs> They're still shaking on the What you guys think? Show me a stick. All right, here's the deal. We have time for one question. Time for one question right now. Jason, you have somebody out there in the audience. I am here with Holly from Savannah. Hi, Holly. Person who was just the clumsiest, like the worst, when you were first teaching. Who was the clumsiest? Like who was the worst person? Too much information. Uh, no one was clumsy really. I mean, it was a case of, uh, well, as I said initially, we had to kind of create something that hadn't been created before. It had to encompass all of the movements that had gone in the four biggest movies in history. So I couldn't undermine anything that had gone already, but also had to accommodate what was about to um, come. But all of the actors were physically uh, v very good. I I'd say it really took off, I think, when, uh, when Gary Oldman um, came into rehearsal. Because he, he absolutely ran with it. He had, if you think about the physicality, say, of Malfoy and the physicality of Sirius Black, they're obviously very different. And uh, Gary Oldman really ran with that. He really wanted to make his, the physical style of his character very sort of streety, as opposed to very formal. Um, it's, it's as if... And, 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 and that also, Rafe's trying to use his back to that slightly, where he, he was always sort of, there was a slight disdain to the way he used it, you know. And, and everybody, that, it, it really did help. It developed people's sense of, of the fact that it was a powerful thing. Yeah, I, 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 actually, the thing that you just said, which, which we, we talked about before, and, I, and I, I didn't mention it today, is that a couple of the movements, the big movements, the, the Veil Room death sequence was a real-time piece of choreography from beginning to end, like a dance. But the Atrium battle was more sort of single storyboardy movements that resulted in big effects. And two of those movements I took from clearly dance-based movements. One was, I know that you like this, is the, is the Banderillas movement from a bullfight, which I used for the shards of glass, to gather all the shards of glass up and fire them forward. And the rope of fire I took from a dance movement called the rope spin, which you normally do with, with a partner, the person goes around your body. But it, it, the, the position was storyboarded, so in answer to your question, I don't think anyone was clumsy. They, they were all physically very good, uh, and their biggest concern was making sure that they were able to personalize the movements for the physical style of their character. Excellent. We have one more question, actually. Jason. We do. This is Allie from Colorado. She's got a question for both gentlemen on stage. So if you, as yourself, not your character, had a wand, what would be your core? Me? What was the question? <laughs> My, the core? Do you know, I don't know what the core of mine is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think... Uh, the core of your character? I, I, no, no, the core of the wand. Uh -huh. I, I think, because... I don't know if you can see that it's turned. You know what I mean by turned? It's been turned on a lathe. And I, I think that the core of my wand is a very ancient magical ash tree. <laughs> which features very heavily in Norse mythology, madam. And I think it's from Yggdrasil, <laughs> which is the ancient Norse symbol. Well, I can tell you that my rehearsal wand was a stick known as a piece of dowling. <laughs> and, and in fact, something I realized when um, uh, the studio tour opened, and I, I actually started to work with other people's wands, is that actually I was pretty hard on them, because the, the dowling stick that I had really did switch and had a sound effect. And when, when the actors weren't getting that, I was like, no, 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 no. And then I finally held it on, on, on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. Well, guys, that is all the time we have for questions right now. Thank you, Paul.